What's up, y'all? Welcome to my first official YouTube video, baby. Hey, my name is Blake Dupree. I'm 21 years old, based out of Chicago. I'm an actor, artist, cheerleader, dancer, model, podcast host, radio host. Basically, I do a lot of shit, okay? And I do it well. So, I know y'all want to get into the title. This is my very first employee story time where I post story times every payday about the different occupations that I have taken part in a lot, a whole fucking lot. And I basically just give y'all the rundown on what it's like to work for different people, different companies, different entities within themselves. But before I get into that, this is my first video, so y'all finna get to know me, period. So, basically, I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm black as fuck. I'm queer as fuck, I'm talented as fuck, and I'm intelligent as fuck, and I'm spiritual as fuck. So if you ain't down with none of that, you ain't done none of that, if, you, if your mind is a size small, bitch, if your mind is a size medium, you can exit the chat. There, there's the door, bitch. The door is to the left. Exit the chat. Go on. Unsubscribe. Don't fuck with it. Don't like it. I don't care. Somebody gonna fuck with this shit, okay? I named a bunch of shit that I am. I know it's some talented hoes, some some black hoes, beautiful black hoes, um, some queer as fuck hoes watching this shit right now. So somebody's gonna like it. If that's not your thing, that's not cool, but that's okay for now because I ain't got time for y'all. Peace out. But anyways, let's get into some things, okay? As you can tell by the title, this is a hell of an employee story time to, you know, debut a YouTube page, but I must say so myself. But this is the time that I worked for Kanye West. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, <laughs> this is the time that I, I worked one of Kanye's Donda album promotional shows. And it's a lot to unpack, okay? Um, it's, it's, it's a lot to talk about in light of the Astro World um, tragedy that took place. Rest in peace to the victims, and I'm sending condolences to the families. Um, I just felt like this was the perfect, perfect way to really talk about some of the things that I've been through in this industry. Like I said, I am an actor, I am an entertainer. I've done a lot of stuff, not necessarily negative stuff, but stuff. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to get right into it. OK, so we're going to split this into about maybe four or five parts. I'll talk about how I got into the Donda show, the rehearsal process, the show itself. And I'll give my review of the overall experience as well as the album. You know, why not give an opinion? Everybody got assholes. Everybody got opinions. I got one, too, baby. So, um started off like this my good sis we're gonna call her brandy now brandy and i do a shit ton of stuff in the chicago market industry together we audition for things together we go on shows we're in shows together we go see shows together and we're just good industry friends and if you're in chicago and more specifically if you're in chicago and work in the entertainment game you know a real friend it ain't easy to come by so i keep brandy right here in my heart like i ain't letting that hoe go brandy you know who you are i know that ain't your real name you know who i'm talking about you my girl. So Brandy hit me up. She said, hey, let's do the Donda show. Here's the audition submission. The casting company posted it on, I believe it was Facebook. Um, she sent that to me. I was like, all right, cool. Let's do it, girl. Let's get this coin together. And basically, the submission audition link said, looking for extras. Extras with a little bit of rhythm. And I was like, all right, cool, shit. I can dance, I can I can pick up choreography, but this don't seem like something that's really gonna challenge me. It seems like something that's gonna be an easy check and a hell of an experience. You know, shit, I got to work with Kanye, period. Put them in the resume. I think it's on there, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> but it said that we're looking for extras with a little bit of rhythm and a little bit of drill team experience. It's like, all right, cool, I fit that. I submitted, got the email the next day that I was gonna be in the show, and boom, that was it. So I got the audition invitation a week prior to the rehearsal processes. Now the rehearsal processes were supposed to begin on Tuesday of the next week. 
but they actually sent us an email the casting company sent us an email requesting that about 50 people join them a day earlier instead on a monday to kind of uh learn the choreography before everybody and by everybody failed to mention this show contains 700 extras in case you were wondering and this was the last show in chicago which was on august 26 2021 i'm sure if you're not living under a rock you've seen clip it, snippets of it um i'll get into the whole symbolism and shit of that too however they needed 50 extra people now this is important and we're going to get back to that soon why those 50 extra people are important so i couldn't be one of the 50 because i had life shit i think i had just moved back into my dorm like a few days prior to the audition and i was tired all right i had just moved a bunch of shit in got a bunch of groceries just started classes and i was just adjusting and i was gonna miss a whole week of class so i was like let me at least go to monday's class to lot my professors i can't make it of course they knew the circumstances they was like shit bye there's the door bitch go um make sure you get as much coverage as you can because i am a communications major and they love it they love to see their students working in the industry while they're still students at chicago state oh yeah did i tell y'all go to chicago state it's my bottle y'all i'm a cheerleader it's me anyways um so yeah so couldn't go monday tuesday rolls around we got the email the same tuesday that morning of of the first rehearsal to come makeup ready dressed in all black and ready for camera so i was like okay cool i'm gonna pack a bunch of shit because i know from experience when you go to these damn sets you gotta pack it for the unexpected you damn near gotta pack for a mini trip that's just what you have to do i have never overpacked for a set for a time call none of that you just gotta be prepared because anything everything's gonna happen everything is going to happen that's just the way it is so I packed a bunch of shit. I packed everything from gym clothes to leather pants to black jeans to black sweaters and black t-shirts. Everything was blacked out. I even had a pair of black leather boots as well as a pair of black gym shoes. Just like, bitch, it's giving versatility. Like, it's giving verse, I do anything. And my suitcase was doing anything that day. Okay, you feel me? So anyways, me, I roll up to Brandy's house and we ride to Soldier Field where the event was taking place together. And we jammed. And we like, oh, but you get to work with Kanye, period, period. We like, we like, oh, girl, I hope you're on that demonic shit because you know how he be. I'm like, nah, girl. You know, he found Jesus in his last album. So we gonna find Jesus in this one. And it's the end of his mama. Fun fact, Kanye's mama actually taught at the school I attend now. True tea. Um, anyways, so... We get to Soldier Field and we're in the line. We had to get COVID tested every day, which is something I'm like, oh shit, you know, people don't want to get vaccinated. People do get vaccinated. Either way, you're going to need a COVID test. So we got tested every day. And honestly, the COVID testing process, we was in and out, boom, boom, waited in line for like 10 minutes to like process our paperwork. And that was it. We was in there. We was like, oh, let's get ready. We was happy. We was ecstatic. And so I noticed one thing in the midst of us walking in and, you know, getting settled in. I see a whole lot of stretches, a whole lot of warm-ups, a whole lot of athletic wear. I see about 50 people warming up and they don't look camera ready. They ain't got no makeup on and they damn sure ain't got nothing cute. No disrespect, but they look like they were ready to fight. But they had on all black. I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Um, but I'm also seeing people dressed like me, camera ready. I did a little light beat, you know, a little foundation. I don't really do too much with my makeup, but my girlfriend, Brandy, was makeup ready, and so were a whole bunch of other bitches and niggas who got the same email that we all got to come ready for the camera. Because that's what the email has said. So I'm like, hmm. About 50 of y'all are weird as hell, but I'm just gonna, you know, enjoy my day and <laughs> do what I came to do. You know, I came to be an extra with a little bit of rhythm, and that's what I'm gonna be, and I'm camera ready. So the choreographers come in, right? And they're like, oh yeah, we had a really, really good rehearsal yesterday, but unfortunately we had to cut some people because they just couldn't keep up. And I'm like, what what the fuck you mean you had to cut you? I've never heard of extras getting cut. They extras ain't too much you gotta do. I'm like, oh, okay, th- th- that's weird nothing nothing too much you know nothing too intense whatever it happens i guess not in my experience but it happens so i'm like okay um whatever so they had the the 50 people who was probably like 45 apparently demonstrate the routine now the routine is the whole album we did you're moving the entire album 
the entire album so they did that the 45 whatever 25 whatever whoever didn't get or got cut they did that they did the whole thing and i'm like okay um yeah this ain't what the fuck y'all said it was gonna be not at all it's not this is not what y'all said it was gonna be y'all said you needed extras with a little a paint a paint rhythm this ain't it this is not it we are background dancers and no wonder 10 whatever people got cut the day before because y'all was giving them choreography down texture down y'all was giving them life and they could not keep up they died period so i'm like i look at brandy i'm like girl she look at me she like bitch i'm sorry i look at bitch if you want to leave we can leave we can we can leave right now don't nobody know we here i'm looking at her like well you my ride so i gotta do what you want to do so what do you want to do Brandy was like, I'ma stay. I'ma stay. I'm like, yeah, no shit. I knew you was gonna stay. I'm staying too. We in this shit together, girl. Let me go change my clothes though. Cause I came into the field with like leather pants. I came camera ready. I didn't come ready to learn choreography that intense. So one thing that really irked me was that Hey, I was false flagging. If you needed background dancers, you could have easily found 700 background dancers in the city of Chicago. It's so many people who dance in this city. It makes, come on now. You, you already know Chicago is home to dance, period. I don't give a damn what y'all think or say. Chicago got the best dancers. We got the best everything, baby. Food, pizza, singers, dancers, actors. This right here is going to be the new LA. Give it 10 more years. We already got another studio, a black owned studio. Finna come on the south side. I'm rambling, but whatever. So I was like, okay, the cast of company should have specified that they needed experienced dancers. Not, so, not specifically because the choreography was hard, because it was extremely stamina. It was not because the choreography was necessarily hard, but because it was so stamina heavy it was so cardio heavy i mean for 20 minutes of the set and the set is about an hour you're running and you're you're not not like a speedo but you're jogging a good 20 minutes that's for like four songs you're just jogging in a circle you think people who came in leather dresses leather boots high heels and god forbid didn't bring a change of clothes were expecting to run for 20 minutes so naturally when people were showed the routine by those 40 dancers that used to be 50 motherfuckers got up and walked out They're like no we go this is not what y'all advertised this is not what y'all marketed and i see why y'all did it maybe y'all didn't think chicago had the talent but chicago had the talent and when you post an event in chicago you are you know people from wisconsin st louis indiana all the surrounding states people who are really dedicated to the arts are gonna audition are gonna get submitted are gonna work in the city it's just how the game goes in the midwest baby so that was stupid shame on the cast and company even though i love y'all y'all were really professional during the experience not free experience that's a different story because you false flag the average advertisement of what exactly you needed but y'all was cool so i was a little irritated by that but i was like i can do this you know i go to the gym every day this ain't nothing for me i can do it so i did it and you know that was the first day of rehearsals we did it once took a break got some really good food the curtain was dope did it twice and went home but one thing that we did was the donda chant now kanye has a track on the album where i believe selena johnson i think that's selena johnson a famous um chicago-based singer not Chicago based, but she's from Chicago. Selena Johnson says the name Donda a certain amount of times. Now, I'm not necessarily sure if this is true, but from what I was told, that was the amount of times her heartbeat was caught before she passed. Um, that could be just Twitter folk, Twitter, Twitter myth, whatever. But that was eerie because we were supposed to rehearse every day outside. But every time the Donda chant came on during the rehearsal process, it would start raining. And I'm not talking rain like a pretty rain. I'm talking a thunderstorm. Like we were in a whole soldier. We were in a whole stadium and we could feel the thunder when it would rain. And I just thought that was weird because it would be cool. We would be set to rehearse outside before that Donda chant came on. It's like, okay. I'ma just leave that there. I'm just here to get my money and dance for y'all. That's it. But it was duly noted by majority of the dancers that that shit was fucking weird. Ain't no way to walk around it. So day two rolls around. We do the same thing. Rehearse. This time we came prepared for battle. <laughs> I came dressed to impress. And by impress, I mean depress. Impressed to fight. Um, I came dressed in some black jogging pants and a t-shirt. And I was ready to go. Ready to roll. And we did it again and again and again. 
Um, a lot of motherfuckers got in shape that one week, okay? Including myself. I, <laughs> Baby, I lost about five pounds a day doing that damn choreography. And we had noticed that the Donda chant rolls around again. And every time we were supposed to go outside. But anyways, as I was saying, every time that the Donda chant came on, it would just start buku raining. And it was just noted. I'll just leave it at that. But of the many things that were noted during that whole experience, this was another one that, this experience was a testament to demonstrate that you can have a lot of money, but still not have your shit together as far as how the show was designed, how the rehearsal process was designed. Like it made no sense to have 700 people in a lounge <laughs> in a stadium for the entirety of the rehearsal process. Like, that was crazy to me. Made no sense at all. Like, I, a lot of people were saying, and I'm not trying to disrespect anybody, but a lot of people were saying that had Beyonce done something of this magnitude, Beyonce would have been in the rehearsals at least once. Kanye was not in the rehearsals at all. Not one time. I ain't see Kanye until the day of the show. And another thing that was definitely noted between all of us is how unpredictable Kanye West is and I kind of like that I, I wasn't mad at that part you know he could have showed up to a rehearsal you know could have had a picture with the brother whatever but he was extremely unpredictable even though he was not there so <laughs> this is how it went down so they tell us the first day that hey so proud of all of you so much like this is some legendary rock star shit but we just want to like really enforce the fact that Kanye West is bound no they they wouldn't say Kanye West they'd be like Ye is bound to switch some shit up so we're not exactly sure if the songs that you hear and rehearse to are the songs that are you're gonna be performing to the day of the show because you know, rock star shit. He's just bound to switch some shit up. And when I heard that, I was like, what the hell you mean? We not rehearsing to the songs you're gonna be performing to. Apparently, apparently, that's very normal between all these A-list artists. So it was good that I kind of got that experience, you know, <laughs> under my belt. And I kind of liked it. I kind of liked the excitement of knowing that, wow, I get to hear by the way, the album that you guys hear on iTunes and all that, the album that's released is not the same album. Kanye has a lot of tracks that I got to hear that a lot of people have not heard. Like, my favorite track on the rehearsal album, I call it the rehearsal album, ain't out because it's a rehearsal album track. And it's got some legendary West Coast artists on there. I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to get sued or nothing. I don't know what I signed when I signed the paperwork. But that shit was fire. Um, so I kind of like the fact that he was keeping everybody on their toes and it kind of makes you more of a professional in this game. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciated that. That was cool. Um, post performance. I ain't gonna lie. When I heard that shit, I was like, are you kidding me? On top of having to deal with all these unprofessional people, I got to deal with not knowing what the hell I'm be performing to. Okay, whatever. But now I'm like, okay, cool, I did it. I can do it again. Because you really can. It wasn't that hard. Just remember the dance steps and you'll be straight. But another thing that I was duly noted for myself was that I'm not used to working with people who are not on the same level as myself, whether it be higher or lower, because there were different levels of maturity. Of course, 700 motherfuckers. you going to have people who ain't never done shit before. This was a lot of people's first show. So I was like, oh, okay. I see you are ignorant you dumb as hell you don't know how to act so you can't keep your mouth shut like it would have made the process much smoother everybody was just quiet listen to the people who were in positions of power kept it moving get your paycheck enjoy the experience and go home that's what i do in any setting shut up listen speak when i need to speak speak when my voice needs to be heard and i keep it moving all the unnecessary chatter now, mind you, it's cool to socialize when it's appropriate to socialize, but when you only got four choreographers, 700 dancers, what the hell do you think is going to happen? How, how much the process is going to be slowed down and hectic if ain't nobody really listening like that? And shout out to the choreographers. You did y'all thing, but they should have had somebody in place to, like, I guess, crowd control, extra control. Because y'all wanted that many people, you're, you're bound to have some bullshit. 
and it was bullshit alone like it was some unprofessional professional shit but anyways we go along the days every time donna come on it rains and it's the day of the show i'm hype i'm happy as hell what you <laughs> baby it's me me and yay like me and yay gonna be right there and kim period and the little kids like i'm gonna be right there with them period so i thought which actually so it became which i did not know was gonna happen so it's the day of the show i'm hype i'm energetic i done told my professors they spread on the word like fire across the school don't know why because i asked most of y'all to shut your damn mouths about it but they did not as i kind of expected them not to so half the school knows and i'm performing at this event and shout out to my school y'all ride hard for me because half of my school legit came i'm sure not just to see me but obviously to see kanye but it just felt good knowing that half of my student body was at the event too to support and enjoy the show but i'm ecstatic i'm like let's go let's make history for ourselves me and brandy we work extremely hard we audition for stuff all the time it felt good to know that we were booking something that a lot of people wouldn't be able to book in the future because how many how, how many times is he gonna do a promotional tour for our album probably never again so that felt good it was kind of like a once in a lifetime type ordeal and so we were just enjoying the moment and we prayed before our call time it was like lord whatever happens happens we're only here to serve you we only had to do what we love to do and that was about it the final day so we finally get outside and we notice the house the house that everybody the infamous house if you want to call it that was his replicated house in his childhood home in chicago and we finally get out there we're doing the damn thing but one thing is for sure it smelled so so damn bad we're like what is that like do you smell that shit do you smell it it smelled really really bad and i noticed the scent got cl- the scent got stronger i noticed that the scent got stronger the closer you got to the house so I'm like what the fuck what? like it smelled like the universal soul circus times 20 you know how the circus be stinking because of the animals and shit it smelled like that times 20 i kid you not i could have passed out i thought i was gonna pass out from the heat and the scent it smelled so bad but have an associate's degree also a bachelor's degree so i'm a little smart so i came to the conclusion that the sand that was used as a platform for the house as support for the makeshift house was the cause of the scent smelling like shit because you need fertilizer i guess to keep the sand in place to keep it sticking to keep it sanitary which was actually not the case because it smelled like ass to keep the house afloat but baby I felt bad for them singers, them Kanye singers, that Kanye choir, they were on top of that sand. And I know they were singing their ass off and every high note they hit, they vocal chords was probably filled with shit. Just, oh, oh, let's get right. Oh. Look, they were probably dying. And I, mad respect to y'all, my hats off to y'all professionalism because you could obviously tell who was in the choir and who was a dancer because the choir shut the hell up, did what they needed to do and bounced. We talked the whole rehearsal process, not myself, but like, people just could not shut up but the choir they probably didn't talk because they smelled that shit in their um souls because they were right on top of it probably why they didn't talk but that was that now the one thing i will say that i did not like the most about the day of the show was that they kept us waiting in a unair conditioned part of the stadium for a good two hours and they kept us in that unair conditioned part of the stadium for two hours in our Donda costumes. And if you, I'll try to put a picture in. I'm not that good at editing yet, but I'll explain it to you in case I don't. It was a TSA outfit mixed with a military suit and a dash of easy. <laughs> it was a black mask, black vest, thick thickest of the thick black pants and dress shirt with black gloves and black military boots we look like gta characters made by a seven-year-old with a dash of yay and i felt like i was going to get a dash of death waiting those two long ass hours almost three actually it was about three hours we had to wait 500 of us you know put together like little sausages like vienna sausages we just waited and i actually had to take a nap because if i didn't my energy was gonna be 
for the actual show itself. The show was supposed to start at 9, the show didn't start to 11, and of course, they warned the bitch, they warned the nigga that Kanye was going to be performing to entirely different tracks, not only entirely different tracks, but a different sequence of tracks. So, one tempo may have worked for the rehearsal process, but it didn't work for the show, just because nobody knew what he was going to do. So we would be running to a song that we originally were supposed to slow dance to, a slow movement to, because a lot of it was just movement. And it, it and we thought it looked a hot ass mess, but by the time the show was over, <laughs> we felt like the cream of the motherfucking crowd because people were just complimenting us like crazy as we were walking back from the show, and we just felt like so empowered and so, you know, fulfilled from all that bullshit that we went through that whole week not even bullshit just from all that different shit the roller coaster of emotions and that shit was dope for real and one thing that i will you know a little you know the spoiler nobody told us that kim kardashian was going to come out and i was one of the dancers that she walked right past like i could have touched kim if i wanted to i wasn't gonna do that because i was trying to get shot from a distance um no I could have touched her if I wanted to, but she came right out. It was real smooth. We all respected the space. You know, a lot of people didn't even realize it was Kim, but I was so close that I could see her face through the veil. And she, she kind of looked at me for like a split second, like, what do I do? Oh my God. <laughs> and that was that. Kim is really short. Kanye is actually really short. I'm 5'6". I think Kanye is 5'7". Kim got to be like a good 5'2 on a good day because they are extremely short, stubby, pretty people. Both of them are actually very pretty. Um, to look at and that happened I did not like the fact that the baby came out or Marilyn Manson being that they are both known abusers to women that's neither here nor there that was not in my contract I was just there to dance for y'all that was it and we might as well just get to the part about the symbolism okay I'm not a conspiracy theorist I don't have the time the energy or the space but if I see something I'm gonna acknowledge it that's what is being shown to me and I'm gonna just keep it at that um, I think our community especially denies a lot of what people may call conspiracies, but a lot of these conspiracies is actually, are actually realities. So it's important to acknowledge your intuition, acknowledge the voice in your head, whatever you want to call it, that's going to tell you something about this necessarily ain't right, but something about this necessarily is different. It's, it's different. Um, some people like to say that the shows that Kanye put on was a ritual to conjure his mother's energy. I'm not going to really say that. I will say that when you pay tribute to somebody on such a large scale, what do you expect to happen? You think their soul just ignores it? I don't think so. I think that he just wanted to pay tribute to his mama in his own Kanye twist, his own Kanye Jenna like quoi. And of course, maybe his mother's spirit fulfilled or was touched by those tributes in his own way. And I'll leave it at that. My opinion on the album, I thought the album was dope. I'm not gonna lie, some people say it was lackluster. Maybe it's because I have a personal connection to it in a sense. But I will say, if Kanye had released those extra tracks that we heard during the rehearsals, it'd be 10 times doper. Like I said, my favorite track on the album was the one that nobody apparently is ever gonna hear unless he releases it. And it's with some mainstream popular West Coast rappers. It makes perfect sense to release that shit. But that's neither here nor there. I'm just glad I got to be a part of it. And I know y'all might have mentioned why I mentioned it. I know y'all might be thinking why I mentioned Astro World earlier. It just goes to show that you can have all the money in the world, but if your shit's not together, shit's gonna hit the fan. And I was blessed that shit did not hit the fan as hard as it did for Astro World on the Kanye's level. But to my artists, to my people with major platforms, Buku's amount of money, get y'all shit together. Be a part of every single day of your process be in person see what's going on because that shit could have went a lot smoother had you been at one rehearsal my brother i guarantee you would have not approved of some of the behaviors that was going on and that's all i got to say as far as that's concerned but i know y'all gonna like click comment subscribe come on welcome to the home of the humble and bougie baby the first employee story time i'm so glad i'm starting this journey i'm so glad y'all are here with me run them views up run them subscribers up because i'm gonna reciprocate that energy baby support me i'm gonna support you much love peace and blessings y'all